Today's goal is to demystify the 4x5 large format film camera. It's not that scary. Check it out. Hi, I'm Jamie Maldonado. This is Camera Insecura. And like I said, we're going to talk about the 4x5 film camera today. But first, I would like to talk about a couple other quick things. Uh, I try to post basically weekly. Today's a little delayed, but I had some uh, dental work done. And I'll have some next week, too. But I'm already ahead on that one because it blends into this one. So I'm going to do back-to-back parts, I hope, for once. This week is a fun first. I have my first viewer mail I'm going to make a little intro. I've got a cool idea. So you should uh, probably send me some viewer mail if you want to. If you have a zine, if you have some prints, if you have uh, postcards or whatever, get in touch in the comments and we'll get in touch by email. If I get enough viewer mail, I'd be happy to start a P.O. box. So my first viewer mail comes from my patron, Hugo Hernandez, who sent in these awesome zines. There are two of them right here. This is called Walk With Me. And I really dig this back cover, self-portrait, I'm assuming. I'm just going to share some pages. And uh, because this is hard to do on this setup. But I encourage you to check this out. Put a puppy in it. uh, I'll be happy. On the opening page. I'm up before sunrise. I'm tired. My Haley is begging for a walk. And I want to find a way to make my one hour walk with her bearable. I decided to take my camera. So walk with me and let's take some pictures. And then on the next one, uh, keeping up with the with me theme, rock with me. Oh, you want simple statements? A collection of images taken at concerts over the years. (laughs) I love concert photography. Kind of miss it, but also don't really miss the people. Uh, Knows how to use the backlight, by the way. I always tell people, if you want to show, make any size concert look like a big rock show, just put the, the canisters of light behind the person and use the backlighting. There are links in the description for you to buy the these works. Uh, I really appreciate Hugo sending them to me. They're really beautiful. They're uh, well, well made. I guess if you want any kind of criticism, which he, uh, which he did ask um, me for... I, uh, I think he should be, and he might have been, but uh, maybe a little more intentional about the bleeds. Because I know he probably doesn't want to crop these photos, but some of them will go to the very edge. And some, and some will bleed over it, letterboxed, but also have the gutter. So, um, otherwise, uh, beautiful images, beautifully printed. Uh, I really like the size of them because it's big enough to really get a feel for the photograph. The quality of the paper is nice enough to really get uh, a feel for the photograph. There's a lot here. He took plenty of time to shoot them. It's not like uh, a lot of people now will go and just shoot 100 photos and say they've got a book. Well, he spent five years or more, you know, uh, taking these photos and then now he's curated them. And and like I said, he's a patron. And he is a recipient along with Ronnie Pittman and Michelle Singletary of my monthly print uh, club prints. If you are a patron and you have not sent me your address, please do. Any current patrons get the first month free, even though really it's it's worth a lot more than um, I think it's $15 a month. I'm charging for it because uh, shipping alone is going to be four bucks on those to not get them bent up. The 4x5 film camera, uh, it's basic. It's very basic. It's a light tight box with a, a hole in it. A lot of people get scared of, of these cameras because they look really intimidating, especially of one of these like kind of technical cameras like I do with uh, all the measuring marks on it or the, the, yeah, the little so you can precisely get your swings and tilts. The lens itself can seem intimidating at first, but I would like to actually right here. Um, maybe we can get a good view of it. So it's just this is it. This is basically the camera. You can see the aperture. There we go. Yeah, that's the aperture. That's, you know, the little James Bond thing. And uh, so there's your F stop. There's your um, shutter speed. Don't set that while the shutter is primed, by the way. 
Um, you close it down. You prime the shutter. And uh, a lot of you starting out will only have one focal length. Um, it's probably around 150 to 210, which is roughly about your 50 millimeter lens, by the way. Um, don't worry. It would be my advice to not worry about swings and tilts. Just make sure your standards are straight up and down and not tilted in any way. If you find some weird focus, it's probably because those are a little off center. A lot of them will have kind of hard stops or like or like semi hard stops where you kind of feel it hit a bump or something like that so that you know you have it in the proper place. And that's about all it takes you. Uh, I, I'm not going to go too far because I'm going to go through some of it when we're out shooting the photos. Let's look at loading the film. You have to do this in a completely dark room uh, or a completely dark changing bag, which is what I'm using. And this, these steps will take place inside the changing bag or inside a dark room. And I'm going to try to figure out an effect, maybe black and white, to show you that indeed this is in a dark room. So what you do is you take the box and it's a double baffled box, you could say. Uh, it's, it's a box within a box. Most of them, uh, not all of them. This Atomic X film I have actually just has a double envelope inside of a box. But uh, most of them I've used are a box within a box. So you have the big box and then kind of the uh, opposite side little box. And inside that you'll usually have an envelope. And in that envelope between usually two, two piece, one or two pieces of cardboard is uh, your film. So what you do is you fish out your one or two pieces and you try to and then you try to minimize how much you have out at any time in case something goes wrong. So what you do is you fish out. I like to do two pieces, everything else up, get your uh, film holder. There are these two little slats. You know, notice the slats have usually some kind of white side and some kind of black side. And it's up to you to, to decide which one is uh, exposed and unexposed. But just remember your system and I'm going to say that white means that the film is ready to be exposed and black means I need to keep it in the dark until I develop it because it's been shot. See the notches here and you just feel with them with your finger, uh, feel for them with your fingers. All 4x5 and large format film has these little things called notch codes. The notch code indicates the emulsion side of the film and you'll want to put it in the in this view, the bottom right hand corner of the film holder. I'm told I load film left handed. Hopefully you can tell that this is where the notch code goes. And some film holders are actually uh, marked to tell you where they are. The This one is not, which is why it's important to practice this in the light. Hold down the flaps on the uh, bottom of the film holder as you slide the film in. And like I said, use the little notches, the little rails as a guide for sliding your film under. They will keep the film from being crushed by the slats. Just push the slats in after you're sure you have your film loaded. And there are these two little things on most of them that will keep the slats locked in place. And you'll also notice that I accidentally reversed the order of my slats. So uh, in case you do that, make sure to check that after you have the light back on to make sure you don't confuse yourself about the orientation of the slats uh, while you um, while you shoot. You don't want to get confused about what you shot or not, because after you shoot a piece of film, if you lose track of your slats or whatever, you have no way of knowing exactly if it's exposed or not. So a couple of things that will help you before we go out and shoot in the next episode. If you can get your hands on a loop. This is a Carson. Um, there we go. Carson tens times loop. And you can just use it to um, to view the ground glass for your focusing. This has a little necklace attachment, which I am probably going to use eventually. Another thing I would I would suggest is this is a simple release cable. This is one of those um, old school ones. A good sturdy tripod. You might need a light meter. They don't have to be this fancy, but this is uh, a light meter of mine I use from time to time. A Sekonic, um Zoom Master L508. I actually got in on Sekonics 
blog once for for using this it was kind of cool you could of course use your digital camera as long as you pay attention to stops and isos and stuff like that but also there's this great app called pocket light meter which i really like um and tends to be accurate when i test it against the Siconic. If you use flash, you'll need to use a flash meter like the Siconic. Most of your uh, large format cameras will have leaf shutters, meaning you can shoot the entire range of speeds with the uh, with the flash. We might play with that. By the way, you need a dark cloth. Uh, your light meter tells you all the settings. You don't even have to think of that. You take all the time in the world that you need. Compose your shot. You have to shoot upside down and backwards on here. And that sounds terrifying, but it gets real easy. So you'll be terrified about the dim upside down backwards picture at first, but then you just break it down. You take your sweet time, look at the light, compose the pictures. Use your phone if, to compose a picture if you want to. A, a shoot with a large format camera is maybe six shots. If you can shoot a camera on manual mode with extreme slowness, you can shoot large format. It's uh, the simplest camera out there outside of a pinhole camera, if you ask me. You can go crazy with it. You can do some really wild stuff, but you don't have to worry about that. Just like all those buttons on your SLRs that you see, I tell people you don't need most of those. Once you kind of shoot a few photos with this, you're not going to be afraid anymore. And it's going to be a lot of fun because you will slow down. And if you think film makes you slow down, large format makes you format makes you really slow down it's cool I, I really dig it so there you go that was the large format film camera that's uh, the same for 8x10 it's the same for 4x5 or even uh, a lot of times 2x3 if you find one of those although that, that's kind of rare especially these days 5x7 slightly less rare, rare but pretty rare next week we will go into the technicalities and philosophies of shooting large format and we'll look at large format photographers if you like this content, please subscribe, like the video, turn on notifications, and here's a clue about what's on the way.